You know, it occurred to me the other day that when it comes to the public at large, pretty much everybody knows who firefighters are and what they do. And pretty much everybody knows who police officers are and what they do. But a lot of people really don't understand ambulance services and EMTs and paramedics. The first thing that they should know is that ambulances aren't just ambulances. They're part of a system called emergency medical services, or EMS. The concept of ambulances came in the early 20th century on the battlefield, but EMS itself was really born in 1966 with the writing of the white paper, which was titled, Accidental Death and Disability, the Neglected Disease of Modern Society. The public got their first widely televised view of paramedics on the 15th of January in 1972 with a show called Emergency. It starred Johnny and Roy. Johnny and Roy were two L.A. County Fire Department paramedics who responded on Squad 51 out of Station 51. Many years later, after Emergency had ended, came along William Shatner. William Shatner was widely known for a starring role as Captain Kirk in all three seasons of Star Trek The Original Series. After starring on Star Trek and the movies that followed, including Star Trek The Motion Picture and Star Trek 2, 3, 4, and 5, he went on to star in another show which introduced EMS into people's homes by retelling the real-life stories of life-or-death emergencies. The show was called Rescue 9 one one After eight exhilarating years, the show came to an end, but it didn't leave without leaving a mark. It brought a society-wide awareness of what EMS personnel do on a daily basis. Unfortunately, since Rescue 911 ended back in 1996, fictional television shows and movies have given the public a misconception about EMS. There's four different levels of EMS. There's the emergency medical responders. There's EMTs, or emergency medical technicians. There's advanced EMTs. And then there's also paramedics. When it comes to poker, the 10, Jack, Queen, and King each have an equal value. It's the same with the different levels of EMS. While each holds a different level of training and, if you will, a different rank within the field, they're all equally valuable components of the integrated EMS system. This system, consisting of three tiers, is composed of care providers trained in basic life support, advanced life support, and paramedic life support. Now, you might hear people call EMTs and paramedics ambulance drivers. And while they do drive the ambulance, because, hey, someone has to drive it, they do far more than just that. Just driving the ambulance requires a lot. Take the EMT, for example. And an EMT spends an entire semester learning basic concepts of medicine. That's four months of school. Your average paramedic program in the U.S. is actually 72 weeks long. And it covers every specialty of pre-hospital and clinical medicine, including advanced cardiac life support and pediatric advanced life support. Paramedics learn how to read and interpret 3 and 12 lead ECGs. In that way, they are able to diagnose deadly heart arrhythmias. They can do something as simple as putting a Band-Aid on to things as complex as slicing your throat open, cutting into your trachea, and creating an airway to save your life. Now, it's true, at times, many of them can seem very cold. But it's not because they're cold. It's because, after telling you the most horrible news that you can imagine, they have to go back out on shift. See, their day's not done. They often work for 12 and even 24 hours straight. And at times, there's often 6, 7, 8, 9, and even 10 emergency calls waiting to be dispatched. It's also true that folks in EMS tend to have very strong type A personalities. This means that we have a lot of kings and a lot of queens. In fact, we actually have a lot of kings who are queens and a lot of queens who are kings. EMS also has a lot of folks who don't just do EMS. In fact, you could call them a jack of all trades. They work a little in EMS, they work a little bit in fire, they work a little bit in law enforcement. 
we even have guys that go out and serve their country in the military. And yes, it's true, we even have our fair share of jokers. You know, since its conception 49 years ago, EMS has come a very, very long way. A lot of it came from medics who, after the Vietnam War ended in 1975, they came home and they began integrating battlefield medicine concepts into American EMS. A lot of it's also come from well-educated minds trading ideas during EMS Week, which is an annual event that was officially proclaimed by none other than President Ronald Reagan on September 7th in 1988. Old Ron, actor, philanthropist, president, he too was kind of a jack of all trades. You know, one thing's for certain, when it comes to emergency medical service, whether you're going to deal with a career ace or you're dealing with a jack of all trades, when second counts, you can always guarantee that EMS will be there.